Now we have the time of confession of faith. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. May we all greet one another. May we spread the gospel of salvation. With that, the title for today is Light of the Gentiles. Last week, I met you through the video that I recorded from the field of Indonesia. This valley camp was the time scheduled to establish committed worker system and for the pastors to network through the LTS and have the support system for RTS, the foundation for Valley Yewon Church. I emphasize the three onlys through the LTS special lecture which gathered the pastors in the area. It was the leadership training seminar. And I did not preach any other gospel than the gospel of God. Because all religions use the word gospel, but this was the gospel of God, that Jesus is the Christ, the answer to all life's problems. I proclaimed this true gospel and emphasized of the three onlys. If the three onlys does not take place, then evangelization and the walk of faith will not take place. So he said, let us live the life that is concluded in only Jesus Christ, setting the direction upon only Jesus Christ, only kingdom of God, only the filling of the Holy Spirit, doing the covenantal challenge. This is what I emphasized. And by explaining the team of three and the three movements that you and church is doing right now, I motivated them to make a resolution and boldly do the gospel movement together like Don Quixote. While leading this conference, I heard that the pastors in the area were really motivated. I also emphasized the importance of the 237 business persons with a very desperate heart. Because the business persons are so important. There are so many ministries that should have support when we go out to the mission fields. Oh, if that person's person is able to receive help, he'll be able to do so much more. It's so unfortunate. Being able to have the platform for their ministry. I don't know why I can see these things so well. Not only must the spiritual system must be established, but also the platform for mi the ministry must stand firm. The church building should also be different. We must support the missionaries to really work on their missions. When you see the church history of Christianity in Korea, the churches that ministries are founded and the houses of the ministries of the missionaries were the best places in town. They had very big cars. And people thought, oh, the missionaries were really great people with great houses and good cars. So people were envious and they wanted to see and they came and received the gospel. And such instances took place. So this had worked as a contact point for missions. And this is why I'm praying for the determined 237 business persons like Priscilla and Aquila, the host Gaius, and Phoebe in Romans chapter 16. We already have a lot of such business persons, but we are embracing the 237 nations and 5,000 people groups. Thus, we need to scale up. At this moment, May you and every business person set your prayer topics as you hear this word because there are so many people in need of help. 
be able to hold on to this very topic. May my business be the business for missions and gospelization for the 237 nations. A business for missions. I am sure that there is no other prayer topic that will realistically move God's heart than this. Since the essence of our lives is gospelizing and missions, there is no reason for God to not hear our prayer topics for our business to be used for gospelization and mis missions. You should receive this blessing in your field of business, but this game in your field of business, you will surely receive the answer of 237 finances. God will answer. May you receive this blessing. You must receive it. Helping this missionary and that missionary. There are hardships, but people don't know of that. Oh, I really want to help that person. And then he'll be able to receive great strength. In your business and in your workplace, may you be able to have this accurate answer. So when the pastor goes to the mission field, the elder goes. And when the pastor says, please give this amount to the missionary, the elder would say, yes, pastor. So in the mission field of Valley, there were a lot of help that was given. But no one made a name for it. We did our best. That's my heart. May they receive great blessings. Last week, we looked into how the church in Antioch that God used for the missions for the Gentiles that was raised and what kind of presence it showed. After the martyrdom of Stephen, everybody except the apostles scattered all over the world because of the tribulation in Jerusalem. Among them, some who reached Antioch preached the gospel to the Gentiles. The Antioch Church was established because of the working of the Holy Spirit and many Gentiles believed in God and returned to the Lord. And the Antioch Church was a church where unknown Gentiles who had built the mission's mindset of Acts 1-8 and had oneness together. They are first called Christians through the spiritual training done by Paul and Barnabas. In other words, they lived a life of a different class. The words of Acts 13, which we will look into today, begins with the scene where the Antioch church sent Paul and Barnabas as missionaries for the first time in history. We have already looked at this part during Mission Sunday this year. Apostle Paul's real missions journey started in Acts 13. The first missions field was Cyprus, the home of Barnabas. Fought the spiritual battle in the field where the baptism of Satan was firmly established through divination. It was the field of answers where the baptism of Christ was built and the baptism of Satan was destroyed through Paul, who was filled with the Holy Spirit. 
Afterward, Paul's team went to Antioch and Pisidia and preached the gospel. Today's text is based on the missions work done in Antioch. In particular, Acts 13 has significance in missions. It is not only because of the time schedule for the spiritual conversion through the Gentile missions, but also the first because it's also the first missionary commissioning. If you see today's scripture in verse 47, it says, I've made you a light for the Gentiles, that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. This word is from Isaiah 49.6, and it shows the righteousness of God. It shows the rightfulness, inevitability, and absoluteness that the children of God, who have received salvation, must live for the life of missions. God is going to save the two threes of nations through us who have been saved. He wants us to make us a light of the Gentiles. The light of the Gentiles is the missions identity that we must have. Above all, now is the time scheduled to arise and shine the light. Arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Today's word shows how you can stand as the light of the Gentiles in the time schedule that is fully fledged for our missions. God will be responsible. We just need to fully hold on to the covenant and take on the challenge of faith because God gave us the covenant of may all the nations be possessed in the year of the 237 missions. May you hold on to this saying, oh, God has sent us to Yewon Church for that reason. Especially in this time schedule. It is a time schedule to arise and shine the light. All the problems of your family, your personal problems, that will be until you die. Satan will not be able to let you solve this problem. Arise and shine. Children of God who are saved must not sit but stand. Do not be bounded by being slaves of money or the world, but transcend all problems and arise. Through today's word, I bless all human believers that will probably stand as the main figures of the transcendental blessings of possessing all the nations and establish a clear mission's identity as the light of the Gentiles. May you be able to hold on to this covenant and be able to make the challenge of faith. Money is not the problem. The circumstance is not the problem. It is faith. May you be able to have the identity of missions and be able to have the transcendental blessings of may all the nations be possessed. Number one, establishing my message. Let us read verses 13 and 14 together. Now Paul and his companions set sail from Paphos and came to Perga and Pamphylia. And John left them and returned to Jerusalem, but they went on from Perga and went and came to Antioch in Bersida. And on Sabbath day, they went to the synagogue and sat down. One of the strategies for missions of Paul was the synagogue strategy. A synagogue is a place where all the Jews were gathered, so he went there first and preached the gospel. However, there was one unexpected thing that had happened in today's scripture. John left Paul and Barnabas and returned to Jerusalem. Here, John is the one who was also called Mark, and he is the one that later caused Paul and Barnabas to split. In fact, their journey for missions was not even that long, but Mark decided to go back to Jerusalem because it was so difficult and straining. Something that we can learn from here is that if you're not trained, you cannot commit. 
That's why training is so important. That's why we need training. I spoke about this last Sunday as well. The trained disciples are Christians that are like the Christians. Following the passage in the scripture, there was it was where Apostle Paul is preaching the gospel in the synagogue in Antioch. It's saying all problems have been ended by Jesus Christ. It is changing my nature to the gospel nature. What is that? It is, I'm okay, you're okay, everybody is okay. Oh, I really can't understand that person. We must receive healing. I'm okay, you're okay, everybody is okay, is the gospel nature. And only that way you'll be able to do world evangelization. There'll be no curses. If you look at the content of the gospel, the gospel was preached. It was the first sermon of Paul. You can see Peter's preaching in Acts 2 and Stephen's preaching in Acts 7 and Paul's preaching in today's scripture. They all share something in common, which is that all of them has their own kind of message. Paul talks about the exodus, the life in the wilderness of the Israelites, and the age of judges and the monarchy. And they are pretty long chapters, so I cannot read them all for you at the moment, but I really hope you could wholly meditate on them at home. With his message, Paul met a special note on King David because it was through King David that the Messiah came. That's how the gospel was shown. It was because of the Messiah. Who is this Messiah? It is Jesus Christ. So the Gentiles cannot know of this. Moreover, Paul preached that although Jesus Christ was nailed on the cross and died, he was not buried in the grave like David and left there to rot, but was resurrected. That is why you believe him and that you are redeemed and called righteous. And it is this gospel message. It is the most gospelized message, the message about a man becoming righteous only through faith, not through any actions or hard works. You don't need efforts, you don't need any other things, all you have to do is believe. You don't even need 1% of man's efforts, amen? Paul's message in particular was always focused on Jesus Christ. The core message, despite the varying methods of delivering, expressing, and approaching, depended on the audience and circumstances, were solely about Jesus Christ. It was a message based on the three onlys. Only Jesus Christ, only kingdom of God, only the filling of the Holy Spirit. In order for us to exert spiritual influence as the light of the Gentiles, as a Christian who is like a Christian, like Apostle Paul, my message must be established around Christ. I have many things to say about Christ. I can confess that Jesus is the Christ. For this, you must know at least seven verses for this, even if you may be a fool. With these verses, 
You must be able to do the acceptance message and proclaim of Jesus Christ, whoever you meet. That is the disciple. Being able to draw the cross message. Should I give you the white sheet of paper? If I go to the mission field, the missionaries bring me the pastors to meet, and I give them the white paper saying, Write the acceptance message. And 20 30% of them cannot write it. If the elders are not able to do this, oh, it's so embarrassing. It's not that, but may you be able to hit your heart with your two hands and go into repentance. I believe that the elders here are able to bring people to acceptance with the prayer, with the five assurances. And after the seven blessings, it is in the church bulletin. Every week it is in the church bulletin. Doing LTS? It was the first day of training. Pastors, all the servants have gone here. If you are able to do the acceptance message, I will give you a prize. I will give you a prize, so may you come out. Everyone was looking at each other, saying, what does he mean? No one can do it. So do you think that church, in that field of ministry, would there be disciples? He must have church disciples, but we're not able to have that. There are not many pastors who are able to do that. Ask them. The disciples of the Antioch Church were also Christians after the establishment of the Bartison of the Word. Going to Yuma Church, I am an elder of Yuma Church. Satan doesn't care. It really depends on how much you are spiritually armored in the spiritual world. People look at the outer appearance, but God looks inside of you. Saying he is a Christian means that person is different. It is receiving this acknowledgments, raising the partisan of the word. Currently, the movement to establish the baptism of the word is underway in the church. It is to personalize the word by reading, recording, and wholly meditating on the 66 books of the Bible. Speaking of Jesus Christ, we'll be able to handle the various fields, situations, and preach the gospel to of the three onlys realistically through this process of personalization. Above all, what is most important and wonderful is that your spirit comes alive through the vitality of the gospel. Naturally, spiritual power rises and leads to a life of a different class. If you write the message on your own, you'll not have Alzheimer, and it'll be very good for your health, too. Your soul will be filled with the word and have vitality, the power of the gospel, power of the word, and then naturally, you'll have spiritual power. 
having spiritual power. And then when that happens, you'll be able to live a life of a different class. I encourage you to choose the most quiet time and utilize holy me meditation to write down and establish my personal message. And I bless all Yawan believers. In the name of the Lord, to have the true disciples and be the true disciples of Christ, firmly establishing the partisan of the word within me, having my established message. Number two, building the partisan of the field. Verses 42 to 43 reads, As they went out, the people begged that these things may be told to them on the next Sabbath. And after the meeting of the synagogue broke up, many Jews and devouts converts to Judaism followed Paul and Barnabas, who, as they spoke with them, urged them to continue the grace of God when Paul and Barnabas testified of the gospel at the synagogue in Antioch. And there were two different reactions. As we just read, there were those who desired to hear more of God's word. In other words, those who received grace. And like in verse 45 of the passage, there were people who rejected, contradicted, and reviled the message of the gospel. Through those who had received grace by Apostle Paul's preaching on the following Sabbath, almost the entire city of Antioch and Sida gathered to hear the word of God. Some of the Jewish leaders who saw this were filled with jealousy, opposed, and reviled the message proclaimed by Paul. And at this moment, Paul and Barnabas boldly continued to preach. Verses 46 to 48 reads, And Paul and Barnabas spoke out boldly, saying, It was necessary that the word of God be spoken first to you, since you entrusted aside and judge yourselves unworthy of eternal life. Behold, we are turning to the Gentiles. For so the Lord has commanded us, saying, I have made you a light of the Gentiles, that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. And when the Gentiles heard of this, they began rejoicing and glorifying the word of God, and as many were appointed to eternal life believed. This explains the reason for God's gospel turning towards the Gentiles. God has chosen Israel for the accomplishment of his redemptive plan, but they fell into misguided pride as the chosen people and acted contrary to God's will and purposes, behaving like stubborn frogs. So they became slaves, captives, prisoners, and suffered the massacre of six million Jews living a life of exile and wandering. Yet still, the majority remains unaware of the significance. In the passage, it shows that while the Jews failed to grasp onto the significance and rejected the gospel, it became remarkable blessings for the Gentiles. Realizing the gospel is what's most important. It is big and great grace. Those who are cursed cannot heal, hear this. There is no change. They go and oppose the word. But this actually became the opportunity for the gospel to turn towards the Gentiles. We must recognize the characteristic of the gospel that it never remains tenant. Verse 49 reads, And the word of the Lord was spreading throughout the whole region. Even if the gospel is blocked, it will be spread. It is the word that describes the characteristics of the gospel very well. The word 
Hipero is a Greek word that means to spread out. It is an imperfect past, meaning that the spread of the gospel is not a temporary phenomenon, but a continuous occurrence. The gospel doesn't stop, although you may not accept it. Like flowing water, it continues to flow to other places. The one who refuses is an absolute loss. In today's passage, the Jews instigated the noble woman who converted to Judaism and the influential people in the city to drive out Paul and Barnabas, but they did not stop preaching the gospel. What is most important is worship. Those who enjoy worship are the light of the Gentiles. And these people continue to build the barges in, in new fields. The people of the Word, the Holy Spirit, and Greece. They don't say, oh, I'm going to stop because that person said something. We must continue to be used by God. Even though persecution may come, the gospel will be more powerful, and the lives of those who receive the gospel are filled with joy and the filling of the Holy Spirit. The Valley Evangelization Camp was the scene. Ninety percent of the residents are Balinese Hindus. Because the city itself is filled with idols where upon your footsteps you hit idols upon with your feet. But when the gospel was preached, 238 people returned to the Lord as many were appointed to eternal life believed. It was the field where the word was fulfilled. If you go overseas to evangelism camps, this word comes to you more realistically. As I said it in last Sunday's sermon, various types of camps will be held in the future in the church. Please join us. If you look at your own circumstances and environment, you will not be able to go out forever. The hesitant Hamlet type life is very harmful and not spiritually beneficial. Once the word from the pulpit is proclaimed, hold on to that word and unconditionally go straight ahead. It is unconditionally. The walk of faith must be so, amen. There is a Korean song saying, if you call me, I will go over the waters and oceans. It's very gospelized. Upon God's call, wherever you are told to go, you will go. Amen? This, uh, this kind of Don Quixote like life is biblically correct. I was telling you and church believers in the name of the Lord that there will be evidence of living a different class of life by putting all in into the covenantal challenge of building partisans both domestically and internationally. This is the conclusion. Among the words that we often use, there is the word awesome. It is used to mean excellence, doing something ex exceptionally well. If the food tastes excellent, it is expressed as being awesome. If the view of a place is outstanding, it is said that the view is awesome. However, if you apply awesome to a person, it means that you are exceptionally good at a certain field. Upon the field and category that they are in charge of, they are awesome because whatever they are given, like a church duty, it is done so well. And for the mission given to yourself, it also means that the completion is perfect, out that the lives of all believers of you and church will be an awesome life of evangelization, not having anything to do with your circumstance. When you hear this, 
God will be responsible for your life. Because God has your life, He exerts and descends to His people. All is in the hands of the Lord. So all you have to do is look well in front of God. Oh, my business is not doing well. Oh, my workplace is not going well. It is all being deceived. If you hold on to the word, it's the end of it. Amen? I hope you will be the one who surely completes the mission God has entrusted you. Then no one will be able to disturb you. I bless you in the name of the Lord that you will be recognized as the best before God and stand tall as the light of the Gentiles in the 237 Healing Summits, not being someone who questions, am I an elder? Am I an anointed deacon? If you're not interested, people are not interested, but it's not just that, it's that God is not interested as well. May you be acknowledged in front of God. How are you acknowledged in front of God as the light of the Gentiles be used? May be used as the light of the Gentiles and be stand, able to stand as the healing summits of the 237 nations.